Hi everyone, I'm Phil Healy, NorCam's Public Access Coordinator, and I'm here today with North Reading Town Clerk's Sue Duplin from the Town Clerk's Office to talk about the Mass State primaries and how to navigate all that craziness on how to register and how to vote. So please, without further ado, the great Sue Duplin. Hello, Sue. Hi, Phil. How are you? I'm doing all right. Hey. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Sue Duplin, North Reading town clerk. As Phil said, the this year, every other year is kind of crazy with the state elections. Uh, we have a state primary election in September, usually every other year, and a state election. So this year is basically all your um, state representatives, you know, your governor, um, sheriff, those type of offices are on the um, ballot, attorney general. Um, I would like to uh, give a PowerPoint presentation on um, different things that are going on for the election, the deadlines. We are going to have um, in-person early voting. It's mandated for one week for the state primary, September 6th primary. Um, it will be for two weeks for the November election. Um, so uh, we have to get through the state primary first, obviously. So um, with any further ado, we'll just move on to the election information. So um, I did a PowerPoint screen here and uh, the first screen is obviously the state primary is actually three weeks from yesterday, uh, September 6th. And um, Secretary Galvin mailed out all of these uh, mail-in ballot postcards, which is actually your application if uh, any voter would like a mail-in ballot. So anybody who is registered by uh, June, July 8th, I'm sorry, July 8th, automatically received one of these postcards in the mail. So here's the postcards here. And, um, and so they are pre-addressed um, and they have the voter's name and residence. In this case would be North Reading residence does have the application deadline, the deadline to get these applications in, if you would like a mail-in ballot, is uh, August 29th for the state primary by five o'clock, and then for November 8th election, uh, November 1st. So these cards here um, give you the option to select um, all the elections. We have two scheduled this year, September, November. Um, or you can get, you can check off one specific election. So most of the cards that we're getting back now um, because they can, and normally for a primary election, it's not a big turnout because, however, because the voters can check off both elections, they do um, as a matter of convenience. So um, the thing with these is for a primary, independent voters must declare a party. So uh, for this particular election, we have um, the Democratic ballot and a Republican ballot. So if you're independent, you have to choose one of those ballots. Uh, so on these cards, we actually have a stack that um, independent voters did not select a party. So we have to follow up with those voters to see which ballot they want. But for the most part, um, if you're registered as a Republican, you have to take a Republican ballot. If you're registered as a Democrat, you have to take a Democratic ballot. And the independent voters have a choice of which ballot they would like for a primary only. For a regular, regular election, everybody gets the same ballot. Now, um, back in the day uh, for the independent voters, when you chose a party, you had to uh, complete a party change card. That is no longer the case. You automatically um, go back to an independent, AKA unenrolled status. It's automatic. So uh, voters, the independent voters don't have to worry about um, changing their party after a primary. The, the thing too that um, you wanna keep in mind for this election is the deadline to register to vote um, is also, let's, it's August 27th which is the first day of in-person early voting, which I'll get into. So for those voters who are registered in a party, they have until August 27th by five o'clock to change your party. We do have some 
voters that are enrolled in a party um, that clearly state what their party is, but they're requesting a different party ballot. You have to change your party um, by the deadline in order to receive a different party ballot. So in-person early voting, as I stated, this is mandated across the state of Massachusetts. Uh, the, there is a beginning date and an end date. So we in North Reading are going to offer a lot of hours. I did um, two evening hours for those who cannot get in here uh, during the day, during normal business hours, or you know those who don't wanna do a mail-in ballot or those who don't wanna go to the polls. They can come in anytime during these hours and do a in-person early voting. So we begin, the first day is a Saturday, and we are here in the office for in-person early voting, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now, um, the reason why we're here so long is that is also the deadline to register to vote or change your party or anything to do with your voter registration. After that deadline, um, you, you cannot do any changes until after the election. So, um, and then the next in person you will see is we're here Monday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on August 29th. That's our regular business hours. So that's the same for Wednesday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now the two nights um, are the Tuesday, August 30th and Thursday, September 1st. We will be here until 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then Friday, September 2nd is the last day to vote early in person, and we will be here until eight to five. So another thing about this too, is if you received a mail-in ballot, you can bring in your ballot into us while we're open. You can drop it off in the office. Um, so let's see, let's move on to the next slide. And um, in-person early voting is gonna be at town hall in the gymnasium. All four precincts will be set up in the gymnasium. So election deadlines. Um, as I stated before, the last day to register to vote, change your party is Saturday, August 29th by five o'clock. You can go on to Secretary Galvin's website and they have everything on there that you actually need um, to, uh, you can register to vote, you can change your party, you can change your address, you can change your name, um, or you can come into the office and uh, just walk into the office. But the deadline is five o'clock on August 27th. Uh, the August 29th, Monday, that's a Monday. Early and absentee ballot mail-in requests. We have to have them in hand by five o'clock. They can be emailed to us. I'll provide the email addresses at the end of the PowerPoint presentation. So, um, and actually any form of a request is acceptable as long as you know they have your the voter's name, address, and a signature. And Friday, September second, is a deadline to vote absentee over the counter by five o'clock. But we're going to be here for in-person early voting anyway, so I would imagine uh, most would do the uh, in-person early voting versus the absentee. We have actually used to have a lot of absentee voting. But now that the mail-in ballots are allowed, we have less absentees, actually. So election day is September 6th. All ballots must be received by eight o'clock in the office. Some voters try to bring them down to the polls. Um, they cannot go down to the polls. They have to come into the office. They have to be recorded in the computer that they received. And all the mail-in ballots are gonna be voted here in town hall. They're actually not gonna to go to the polls. This is a, a mail-in ballot process that actually another town clerk actually in Danvis um, came up with and I thought it was awesome to share. She actually um, set this up to share with her select board just to explain the vote by mail process. Now voters probably on the left-hand side, this is the process it is now, there's 12 steps. So the vote is actually probably only deal with three of those steps. The rest of the steps, the office deals with. There's a process 
everything is recorded. Um, you know, it all starts with an application and then we mail out the ballot. The ballot has to come back. So everything is recorded in the computer. When we mail the ballot, when we, we receive it back, um, on the right is how it used to be prior to uh, mail-in ballots. So there's a lot less, you, you just um, either did absentee or you went to the polls. So now there is a lot more um, options out there for the voter. And actually the polls, because of mail-in voting, uh, the polls are not as busy obviously as they used to be. So these are the ballots. Um, sometimes we have four ballots for a state primary. Uh, sometimes we have the green rainbow ballot and sometimes a libertarian. But for this particular primary, there are only two ballots, the democratic ballot and the Republican ballot. So um, they both ballots, both parties have the same offices on these ballots, you know, governor, lieutenant governor, um, attorney general, secretary of state, treasurer, auditor, representative in Congress, counselor, senator and general court, representative in general court, district attorney, and sheriff. So um, these, are, this, these are the actual ballots with the candidates on the ballot. So in a primary two is basically if you have more than one democratic person, like say for governor here, we have two people. So who, whoever is the winner of this election, that one name will be on the November 8th ballot. So you'll have one democratic candidate and one Republican candidate. So in this one here is a Republican party ballot. Same offices. Um, just different candidates, obviously, for the Republican Party. And um, we, this will be, I'm waiting for my uh, sample ballots, but these ballots will be posted on the website, um, hopefully soon. And um, also, um, the in-person early voting schedule is posted on the town website calendar. If you forget what I said here, um, so you can look it up there. Uh, we're open a lot of hours. This is our official ballot drop box. So it's here 24 seven. So you can drop your ballot in here anytime. You can drop your applications in here. You can drop your postcards. Um, your voter registrations, you can drop in here, anything to do with elections. Uh, we check this multiple times throughout the day. This box will be locked at eight o'clock on September 6th, election day. And, um, you know, we're getting also the ballot return. There's a ballot return checklist here. The main, most important thing is you have to sign this ballot envelope. If it's not signed, we're going to reject it and send you another packet, you know, and it, you know, you need a signature and your uh, residence on here. And there's another envelope that this goes into that's provided with the uh, mail-in ballot packet. So as soon as we get these, we record them in the computer and you can actually go on to uh, Secretary Galvin's website and track your ballot. Um, I'll get into that on another slide. Election day, September 6th, polling hours. This is the same, this hasn't changed. This is at St. Teresa's, 51 Winter Street. Uh, all four precincts will be set up um, the same as usual. Usually we have precincts one and two in one section of the room and then three and four in another section. Here's some election statistics. Obviously, these change day to day. So the last day to register to vote, I'll have to run a report because those are the only ones that can vote um, for the September 6th election. So I ran these numbers as of today. And right now we have 11,937 registered voters in the town. Um, actually, a little less than I when I ran it a week ago for the select board meeting. 
Um, early mail-in ballots, we had about 1,200 about a week ago. Now we got 1,451. And uh, we have 30 absentee ballot requests. And as I mentioned, now that we have mail-in ballot uh, we have less absentees. Absentee, you need an excuse. And uh, these people filled out an application at the beginning of the year. Um, they knew they were not going to be around for the elections, uh, out of town or what have you. Um, they had an excuse. So we have um, 30 of those. And then the early mail and ballots received so far, we have about 250 back. We get a stack back every day. We're mailing out probably about 25 a day, roughly. And then the absentees, we have um, only six back so far. People tend to return everything um, at the last minute, but I mean, it's, it's just creature of habit. So I mentioned Secretary Galvin, um, and I say this all the time, we don't just make this stuff up. Um, there is a law pertaining to everything that we do in the town clerk's office. Um, vote by mail application. So on Secretary Galvin's website, you can actually apply for a mail-in ballot on his website. You can apply for an absentee ballot. Everything is on his website. Voting for military and overseas. If you were a resident or in the military, you qualify federally to vote electronically. They're the only ones that are allowed to vote electronically. So, um, you know, there's affidavits involved. You know, we have to prove residency. Um, you know, your family lived here. Um, online voter registration, as I mentioned, the deadline is August 27th um, by midnight. If you do it online, you have until five o'clock. Uh, if you come into the town clerk's office, we're here until five o'clock on the 27th for in-person early voting as well. So obviously you must be 18 on or before election day to register. Now, if you are 16, you can pre-register to vote at the age of 16. What happens is if you do it online, you go into a certain queue. Um, and then when you are of age to vote, you get transferred over to another queue and then we're able to register you. So on the Secretary Galvin's website, you can view your ballot. You can view the ballots that I just showed. You can track your ballot. So if you submit an application to us, it will show when we received your application. It will show when we mailed you a ballot. And then if you drop the ballot off, you can see when we received your ballot. Where do I vote? It shows also um, on the town website, Secretary Galvin's office, which obviously is St. Teresa's. The polling hours are 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., which is standard statewide. And then um, are you registered? Um, if you're not sure, you should go on now. Even if you're registered, just check your party. Just make sure everything for your voter status is correct because you still have time to change it name change, your address, your party, register to vote, anything. So, and I always say, you know, don't wait, um, check your status early, sooner rather than later. It just saves a lot of confusion on election day. Election day is a very busy day for us. So, um, and we do everything we can obviously to help everybody out. So, um, and um, these are, there's three girls in the office, myself, Stephanie, the assistant town clerk, and Carol. You can email any of us for anything. Um, and this is the Secretary Galvin's website page. They have everything on there as well. And then the, um, the town clerk's North Reading website page right now has um, the early voting in-person schedule and also uh, mail-in ballot application. There's an absentee ballot application there as well. Um, so there's many ways you can come into the office. You can call us um, with any questions or concerns. Um, you can also email your mail-in ballot application or absentee ballot application. 
Um, we will respond. Um, if there are any issues with the application, we are reaching out um, right away, obviously. Um, so I think that's about it for now. Um, I will be back hopefully in the fall for um, election information for the November 8th election. It's going to be pretty much similar, but um, two weeks of in-person early voting versus the one week. Um, so that's it for now. Um, thank you very much for having me. And if you would like to reach out to the office, you can either email us or call the office. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.